listen, I already know most of y'all that's going to watch this are not going to like what I'm about to say. But at the same time, I don't really care. Some of these things just need to be said. And if I have to be the person to say them, then I'm going to say them. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, King Jumo, back at it again with another video. And listen, today I want to talk about the relationship between parents and children. Now, I know this may seem random, but like I've mentioned in several other videos, I'm just on here to talk, really. Like, just say what's on my mind and get it out. I don't have no script or nothing for this. This is just off the dome. I'm also in my sister's room, so that's what that, that, that is. One of the main takeaways that I want y'all to get from this video is parents listen to your kids there are so many kids teens even adults out there that don't feel like their parents hear what they're saying or understand what they're going through and i'm here to shed some light on that kids don't necessarily share this with your parents because they might beat you for this but i feel like this is a good conversation to have with your parents if you you know want to strengthen your bond or whatever parents take this advice with a grain of salt obviously i don't know everybody's individual situations and i can't judge how you um, raise your kids, even though I will. Typically, I find these things happen with black parents and parents of color. I don't really know what the white families be doing. Actually, I feel like the white families do this, and that's sometimes why their relationships are so strong with their children. Sometimes. I don't want to give a blanket statement because, you know, they be, they be doing stuff. They be, they be doing stuff. So I'm going to start this bit of advice off with a story. Last summer, I worked at H&M. One time, there was this mother, her son, and I believe there was a daughter there too, but I don't exactly remember. The story focuses on the mother and the son. They come up to the register, and I'm there. You know, they're black. I'm black. I'm like, yo, this is my people's. Let me slide them a little discount. And I noticed that they're buying Space Jam apparel, like the new Space Jam that just recently came out. And I also just so happened to be wearing this Looney Tunes shirt as I was checking them out too. And it's obviously the son that's buying the stuff. So me and the son chopping it up. I'm like, yo, I see you getting new Space Jam stuff. Look at my shirt. I'm wearing Looney Tunes stuff too. Like, what's good? He was like, yeah, I just saw the movie. Like, it was so good. Now here comes the mother chiming in. Boy, stop talking. You don't know what you're talking about. The first Space Jam was the best Space Jam, okay? I ain't mean to do like a stereotypical black. That's that's just how it came out. I'm, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's basically what she was saying. Like, she kept trying to cut him off and validate his feelings towards the movie. What I do, I told her, nah, hold on, let's hear what he's saying. Now, me personally, I did not have a problem with the new Space Jam. I feel like it did well for what it was supposed to do. Like, it's a new, more modern version of Space Jam. The whole space aspect of it didn't really make sense since it wasn't in, in space, but you get the point. There were nice little Easter eggs in the movie too, like how Bugs Bunny said like, uh, you're the second person to do this or whatever. And then like later in the movie when they referenced Michael Jordan coming back, but it was Michael B. Jordan instead of the original Michael Jordan that was in the original Space Jam. Did I say original Michael Jordan? So I was there legit having a conversation with the kid validating his feelings. I was like, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, I understand why you like the new Space Jam. Like personally, I still prefer the original Space Jam, but like the new one wasn't bad. Now here comes the mother again. Don't listen to what he's saying. He's just a kid. What is he know? I'm just paraphrasing. So then I go on to explain to her that, no, it makes sense why you feel the way that you do, but it also makes sense why he feels the way that he does. He's a kid. This movie just came out. Of course, he's not going to know what the original Space Jam was. And of course, you are because you're older than he is. You see how that works out? Invalidating his feelings just because of his age is ageist. That's the thing, right? I didn't just make that up. But that's just an example of one instance that I can think of. The overall theme here is stop invalidating your children's feelings. Like they'll be more likely to come to you if they feel accepted in the family. If you keep dismissing what your kids say as, oh no, I know better than you because I'm older. First of all, you don't always know better. Parents literally never know better <laughs> than their kids. I've come to learn that. I'm almost 23 now. I have a 34 Five, almost 35 year old brother and a 33 year old sister almost they are still children my brother doesn't have kids but my sister does let me tell you she's still a child parents never really from my experience and from what i've heard from parents and from other people they never really knew what they were doing when they had kids because you know having kids is kind of a one-time thing sure you can get advice from other people but at the end of the day it's your child and your child is different from other children. That being said, just because your parents didn't listen to you as a kid doesn't mean that that's the right way to raise your kids. 
like if your kid is coming to you telling you he has a problem, I use he specifically because little boys, black boys specifically, don't really get the chance to talk about their feelings. Listen to what they are saying. Please, please, please listen to what they're saying. A lot of the times you as a parent are far removed from school. Uh, Side note, this is like the older parents that I'm talking to, the younger ones that are like 21, 22, 23 and having kids or whatever. This doesn't really apply to you because you you're, we're, we're in the same boat here. And they're still in school. They're still learning new things. So a lot sometimes they'll know more than you do. Your kid ever ask you for help on his math homework and you couldn't help? Hmm. And then you get mad because you don't know the answer, but he also doesn't know the answer. So y'all looking at each other like. I keep going off on tangents. I, basically, what I'm trying to say is kids are very smart and you guys need to listen to what they're saying. There is the feeling of, yes, I'm older. I don't have to listen to what you're saying. I get it. Trust me. I get it. I've been raising my nephew since I was 10. Yeah, the sister that I mentioned, like, she's around. But like, you know, you know how people say you can just give your nieces and nephews back to their parents. Yeah, because they live with us. I, I couldn't. So trust me, I get it. He's smart. Like the things that he says are smart. But the issue is his attitude. Like, sometimes I'm just like, I just don't want to listen to you right now. Just leave me alone, please. And I get that. Trust me. But I do have conversations with him. Like, I listen to what he's saying sometimes. And, like, we go back and forth because, you know, he's a person. Like, he tells me stories and stuff about school, whatever. And at the end of the day, no matter how annoying, 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 annoying he is. He's my nephew and I can't get rid of him no matter how hard I try. But I feel like we have a pretty decent bond just because like I listen to him sometimes. Now, does he listen to me? That's a whole nother issue. And I, again, I get that period when they're asking questions, you just don't feel like answering. But still, come on now, like you gotta, you gotta feed into it. This is how they learn things. You are their role models. You have to, you have to do these things. Oh, and don't guilt trip your kids by saying, Oh, you're supposed to do this, this, and that because I'm raising you. I carried you for nine months. You got to do this because I'm taking care of you. I give you shelter and clothes. That's what you're supposed to do, genius. That's literally your job. That's in your job description. When you decide to have kids, that's literally the things that you are supposed to be doing. Like, yeah, gratitude is great once in a while, but like, ha! Huh? Holding that over your kid's head, what does that do for you? <laughs> what? <laughs> what <laughs> again speaking from personal experience anyway i've been rambling for way too long um i feel like none of my points really were connected to each other but again like i said i'm just gonna be talking anyway so that's pretty much all i had to say because any other thoughts that are coming are just like way out there and i don't want to grab them and not have a string to connect them so just let me know what you thought in the comments if you like the video please leave a like comment subscribe Share the video with your friends and turn on that notification bell to get a notification anytime I'm posting. We have hit over 200 subscribers. That's a milestone for me. I never thought I'd get there this quickly. And I know it's been kind of a minute since I posted a video, but like my life is kind of hectic right now. I'm trying. But anyway, that has been another video by me, your boy, King Jumo. And I'll see you in the next.